I'm Jared Carpenter, and this is More Than Blockchain. This is probably the fifth time I've tried to record this episode because every single time I do, I feel like I'm sharing too much information with the internet, and I don't necessarily want to do that, seeing as how this entire episode is about how I was this close to being scammed. So let me try to retell that story and talk to you about getting scammed, especially in crypto. And before I go into the story, I want to say the scariest part about this was not getting scammed. We are all getting hit every single day with a text that's like, hey, hello. Hey, haven't seen you in a while from a number you don't know. Hey, you missed your Amazon package. Click this link. Hey, you missed your USPS link. Click this link. Hey, you won $1,000. Click this link to reclaim it. Those are all things that could be phishing schemes that could lead you to pig butchering, a scam that I've actually talked about on this podcast. I'm going to go ahead and leave that link in the description. Pig butchering is a multi-billion dollar industry annual scam that's going on globally. And so you should learn about it so it hopefully doesn't happen to you. And I've also actually published on this very podcast, a, like I think the 10 red flags or the seven red flags, I actually forget, but I believe it's the 10 red flags that you need to look out so that way you don't get scammed in crypto. I published those and yet I was this close to getting scammed. That is what has me worried. And that is what has me really actually recording this episode. Because if someone like me, someone who's been around crypto for seven and a half years can almost be social engineered and be made to believe to a point where I give away information that would be very valuable to get scammed, I worry about someone hopping into crypto now as the Bitcoin price starts to run. Or in 2025, when ideally the bull run takes off and more people come into the space. So that's why I'm creating this episode because honestly, it shakes me to my core that if I can get scammed, I truly worry about everyone else. So let me go ahead and tell you the story about how I almost got scammed. On the night of September 30th, 2024, I received a call from an unknown number from Denver, Colorado. I picked up and there was a voice, male voice on the other side. And I think it was Brendan or Brandon. I'm not sure. Let's go with Brandon. They said, hey, it's Brandon from Coinbase. We're calling about some suspicious activity on your account. Now, before I even picked up the phone, I remember I was sitting with my father. I said, hey, dad, watch this. This is a scam call. Picked it up and I had it actually on speaker. And he said, hey, I'm Brandon. I'm from Coinbase. There's been some suspicious activity on your account we'd love to talk to you about. At this point, I'm like, okay, let's see how this goes. And I said, yeah, can you you know, prove to me that, that you're with Coinbase? I, I would really like that. And at this point, I still think it's a scam. I'm not at all believing this is actually someone from Coinbase. However, I do start to believe that. They said, yeah, sure. We've just sent over a code to your email. You can go in and see that code. And you can see that it comes from an official Coinbase email. And my gut instinct is that this is just a 2FA. So they have my email and they're just sending me a 2FA code from an official Coinbase email, which would be triggered if they're trying to get into my account. So I'm like, okay, interesting. Interesting because my 2FA is not through my email and you should not set up 2FAs through your email or your text because they can both be more compromised than other ways. So I was like, interesting. Okay. This doesn't really make sense, but let me see. I said, Brandon, can you prove to me that you're an official Coinbase employee? And they, he said, yeah, sure. Because we just sent you from an official Coinbase email. And he says, if you could, could you open up your Google while we're on the phone and type in official Coinbase emails, which I do. And from there, I am brought to this page. Okay. So I click on that page and I go and far down the page, I see the email through which they sent me the, the code through. And it was at that point that I started to believe that this was an actual Coinbase employee. I was like, oh yeah, this came from an official account. Now, my lizard brain had turned off the fact that if they just had my email, they could trigger a code coming into my email to prove something, to, to get, you know, to change something in, in the account, to get something, right? Maybe to change the password. I still don't understand exactly what they were able to do because that's not how I have my 2FA set up. But I said, okay, great. This is how you want to do it. You are an official Coinbase employee. That's what I started to think. I started to think you're an official Coinbase employee. And because I thought that, I allowed Brandon to continue to talk. So Brandon says, hey, we are showing some really suspicious activity in your account and we wanted to make you aware of it because we have someone who's used an ID that you used to sign up for Coinbase when you signed up many years ago and they're in your account now and they're about to withdraw money. And we can't prove that they're not you. So we need you, meaning me, to prove that I am who I am. And he said, in order to do that, we need you to share a code that we're going to send with you, right? Now, 
One of the red flags that I talk about in the video where I talk about the red flags that you should avoid so you don't get scammed in crypto is never give anyone any, any numbers over the phone. In crypto, that could be your private seed phrase or it could be a 2FA number that you get to be able to log into an account or to be able to uh, you know, take crypto off an exchange, whether you wanna take it into cold storage or transfer it to another account. So because I have that embedded in my brain, never share numbers with people on the internet ever, I wasn't able to get scammed. But Brandon still had me on the hook, believing that someone was in my account trying to move money. So I said, Brandon, and I knew at this moment, this is two weeks ago before I had moved money off Coinbase into a safer place. I said, you know, Brandon, you're right. Could you verify for me how much money I have on the account? And at that time, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks. It wasn't a lot of money. But I said, could you verify how much money I have in that account? That would prove to me that you are Coinbase and you can see in my account. And he went off on this long thing about how Coinbase is out of California and they actually can't share that data over the phone. Interesting. He said, if you want to see that, you can go into your account. That was well played. So I said, okay. I'm still now, he's got me quasi believing that he is a Coinbase employee. However, I still will not give him any 2FA information or any numbers, so we're kind of at this weird standstill. And it's in this moment I say, okay, can you show me the ID that this person used to create my account? Or, or you know, how did this person get this, this ID that I used to create the account? Can you send me a picture of what that ID looks like. I'd be really interested to know what that looks like so I can see maybe how I was compromised, you know? Maybe I was in a hotel somewhere and the, you know, the somebody went into my room to clean and they were able to get this ID. I was trying to run through all the things in my head and also give Brandon some homework that would allow me to believe that he was a real person. So Brandon says, "Sure. Let me go ahead and do that." At this point, I put Brandon on hold and I start getting on the internet to figure this out. I open up my VPN, I do all the things I do, I log into my Coinbase account, no activity. No one has logged in. I checked the last time they logged in, it was the last time I remember logged in, logging in. So clearly no one had gotten into my Coinbase account. My Coinbase account wasn't compromised. Brandon was trying to get me to believe that it was compromised. Now all the while that I'm in my Coinbase account, I DM the Coinbase support account on X and, I, and I'll bring it up on screen, but basically I'm like, hey, I just got a house call. I got a call to my number that's on my Coinbase account. I said, hey, do you guys make house calls if you think someone is legitimately trying to withdraw crypto from my account? And they promptly responded to their credit, to Coinbase's credit. They said, hey, hey there, Jared. We understand how concerning this is for you. Coinbase does not make house calls in response to suspicious, to suspicious activity on your account. At this point, I'm like, okay, that's great to know. That really quantifies this more as a scammer. Brandon is still on mute, okay? I actually recorded about 20 minutes of about a 34 minute call that I had with Brandon while he was trying to essentially get 2FA information for me to be able to maybe do some, some more damage. So I wanna actually play a clip for you because Brandon started to get really personal. Now, earlier on in the conversation, he had said some things to try to make himself less like a scammer. And what you're gonna hear now is something that I was actually able to record with my other phone in that moment. So I had him on the phone that I'm recording this episode with, but I had the other phone open in the voice memos for only about two thirds of the conversation. And you're gonna about to hear what he said as he was trying to be more personal. You, you'll, you'll hear me in a monologue and then I'll say, okay, let me come off mute. Apologies as well, Mr. Carpenter, just waiting on that to be fulfilled. I'm gonna go off mute. I really do apologize. All good. Just let me know when it's ready. Of course. And then how's your day been so far, Mr. Carpenter? Any plans later for you? Uh, nope. Just uh, about to make some dinner. Awesome, awesome. I have to take my kids out to a soccer game, so that's going to be something. Oh, yeah? They play soccer? Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, like recreational soccer? Nice. Not really like with a club or anything, but, you know, they're a little young. They're five and four. Nice. So I definitely kind of want to put them out there. Cool. So there you go. Brandon is literally like telling me about his kids who are four and five and they play soccer. And if you know me at all personally, you know that I'm very, very into the game of soccer, into the game of football, calcio. I am a fiend. I used to have a podcast where we talked about the English Premier League. I still coach college soccer to this day. Soccer is a huge part of my life. So I was like, oh, do we want to go deep into this? Do I want to see if he's actually serious? Do I want to really talk to him about soccer? But I just kind of played it off, gave him one word answers, as you heard, all the while feeling that that was really strange, that he was trying to become more personal with me on the phone, really create that human to human connection. 
And that goes on. You'll see that I just ended up, you know, that he basically didn't say anything after. I think he says cool or I say cool. Nothing really happened. He eventually does come on the phone and he says, you know, we're still working on finding the ID and making sure we get that over to your email on file so we can move this forward. So you'll believe us and, you know, you'll start to cooperate more. All the while, he had been asking me to send him other numbers, 2FA numbers that he kept sending to my email, which look like the number on the screen that I think I've already shown a couple times as a way basically to keep trying to interest me, right? And I stood firm and I never sent him any numbers, which was good. And after about 34 minutes, the phone hangs up. He's gone. And then he just hung up and that was it. I didn't hear from Brandon anymore. I was thinking maybe he would call back. I was going to call him. I just let it be. I didn't even block the number because I'm interested for him to call back and for him to create a whole new story as to why he had to call back. The point being here is that there was about a five minute period where Brandon had me on the fence thinking that someone was in my account pretending to be me using an ID that I had used to set up Coinbase, which all wasn't true. In the end, All Brandon had was my email and my phone number, which I'm sure are floating on the internet as is everyone's email and phone number who is watching this. And he clearly was probably putting in my email and trying to reset my password or doing something along those lines and needed the 2FA number to get to the next step, right? The reason why this was so concerning and why I really wanted to share it on this particular podcast and on this episode is because I want to use this platform to talk about the things that happen in this space. And in the past year, I've had a close friend who lost about $17,000 when his wallets got compromised due to another scam. I've known many people in cryptocurrency and in blockchain and Web3 and Bitcoin who have lost their money to scams. And normally it has nothing to do with the tech. It has nothing to do with somehow they broke blockchain or they figured out how to crack Bitcoin. It has to do with they figured out how to manipulate other humans to believe certain things. So that way they would put their guard down and they would give out valuable information that they shouldn't be giving out. Once again, please go watch the red flags video that I created. Once again, I'm not sure if it was seven or 10 red flags. I believe it's 10 red flags is a round number. But if you ever see these things, you want to just stay away. You want to have your scam alert go up and you want to absolutely say, you know what? I'm not going to give any numbers, especially in crypto. Never your private seed phrase or any 2FA that's going to be sent to your email or your text or anything like that. You do not want to give that away. That is super, super, super important. So finally, as a last thing, I want to say this. On a previous episode with Andy Bryant, when we were talking about AI, he was sharing about how his wife and he have certain codes. And the sun is going down, so hopefully you can still see me. He and his wife have certain codes. What I mean is when they call each other, they have a code. So that way, if one day Andy's wife gets a call and it's Andy's voice, and Andy's saying, hey, honey, you know I'm traveling. I'm in California and Los Angeles, and I just have my wallet stolen Can you send me money here? I need about 1500 bucks. You know, love you so much. All these things just happen. They make up a story, what have you. Andy and his wife have a code where they would need to basically, you know, she would have to say, okay, Andy, I'll send you that money, but can you give me the code, right? And I now have this with many people in my life. We've talked about this where if someone is ever going to reach out because I travel a lot, if I ever call a close friend of mine or family member and say, hey, I need a thousand bucks. This just happened to me and it's my voice. They need to ask me a couple qualifying questions so I know, so that way they know, excuse me, that it is actually me. And the reason why I bring this up and why it's so important and why I want to end this episode is that I don't actually know if this was a human voice. You guys heard the excerpt of Brandon from Coinbase using air quotes and what his voice sounded like but I'm not actually convinced that that was a human voice. Maybe it was AI. I think it was a human voice. And the one giveaway was, and I'm sure AI will get better at this. I could hear him breathe every once in a while into the, into the microphone. You know, you could just hear the, the, the air of the human being breathing in and out between words. AI doesn't tend to do that with voice. Uh, you know, when it's mimicking a, a real human voice, it's not to say AI won't start to add that in as it moves forward, but all that's to say, I'm not even sure if this was an actual human. It felt like a human when he started to talk about his kids or were four and five playing soccer. And there were other things, like I said, that I wasn't able to record where he was trying to basically create a human to human connection, but I'm really not sure. So all that is to say, please be careful of crypto scams. If you're in crypto, please be careful of scams in general. Like pig butchering often happens outside of crypto. And if you don't know what that is, 
Once again, I created an episode about that. That link is in this episode's description. Please go check that out. And the other thing is with your loved ones, start to think about what if my voice gets cloned and my AI avatar calls my wife and it's actually someone from another country just using my voice, trying to get her to send me money. I really think that that's a really important conversation. Everyone should start to have with your friends and your family, not just people like me who has, you know, my voice is all over the internet. Think about that. So if you enjoy this episode, please follow us at more than blockchain on socials. Go ahead and share this with somebody. If scamming, you know, is something you think other people should know about. If you're in crypto, please share this with other people. Many people have been scammed in crypto. You are not alone. It happens so often every single day i think we're exposed to new things please go ahead and if you're watching this on youtube subscribe if you're listening to this on a podcast platform please go ahead and subscribe and i will see you guys for the next episode sorry about the light the sun has been going down i hope everyone is well and i'll see you on the next episode